Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining this session titled Trust Yourself, Building a Digital Business from a Bold Idea. I'm joined by Minister Shalsi. in your work. Uh, and then we're going to start uh, talking about some various topics that uh, I've prepared uh, and we'll listen to these gentlemen answer and we will bask in their wisdom. So please, uh, Mr. Okay. Chelsea, uh, introduce yourself if you please. Thank you very much for the invitation. I hope you all well. In this time, health is important. Two battles the health one, the economic one, but priority is the wealth battle. Uh, I'm minister with a very specific title. You can't face it elsewhere. At least I have not come across to such a ministry in other countries. It's called Ministry for Protection of the Entrepreneurship. I've come across to ombudsman in some countries like Poland, like Georgia, but not Minister for Protection of the Entrepreneurship. The reason is that in Albania in the last uh, seven, eight years, we've undergone through many different reforms, big reforms, like the reform in the energy sector, like the education reform, Territorial reform is one uh, that Albanians had been waiting for too long. There were 400 communes and municipalities in Albania. Now, after the reform, we have 61. Uh, there is another reform on pension schemes. But on top of all these reforms, is this justice reform. Years ago, we decided, together with our partners from EU and United States, to design not the reconstruction of the system, not the remodeling of the system, but because the system was not a trustworthy one. 90% of the Albanians were thinking that it's a very corrupt and inefficient, ineffective system. So we, desire, we, we, we decided to knock it down and build it up from the beginning. Imagine what the kind of process it is. There is, a, there, is a, there is a vetting process now, and there are many prosecutors and judges which who are out of the system because they couldn't justify their incomes and their decisions. So this is a huge reform. Under these circumstances, we thought it could be uh, a good idea to have a ministry which, although it sounds a bit paradoxical, uh, should act as an intermediary between entrepreneurs from one side and the government from the other side. I use the term paradoxical because uh, I often say when, when people are asking me, Minister, who do you protect the business from? And I say from ourselves, from, from <laughs> my government. And you know, on a daily basis, I'm, uh, I'm fighting. I, mean, I, I, I say I'm in a non-antagonistic conflict with my own colleague. So I have one leg in the entrepreneurs and one in the government. But uh, uh, due to my background, I, I, I come from the banking sector, insurance, then the local government. Uh, I was always in touch with the entrepreneurs. 
And what I practically do now is that uh, I spend half of the time in my office and half of the time uh, paying visits, on-site visits. You will never understand the business unless you see with your own eyes how he operates, where he operates. And there is this distance between the public institutions and the entrepreneurs. Several times, you know, I get very angry with my administration. Even when they have the goodwill to help and to assist the business, they have a very, very difficult mindset. They're not able to understand properly the business. And uh, what I do is that I deal with the complaints of the businesses. One of the things is that I track and trace the complaints of the entrepreneurship, trying to solve each one of them. But on the other side, trying to understand the roots of the problem. Is it a legal? Is it an institutional? Is it a procedural? Is it a bureaucracy or it's a corruption? And what should we change in order to improve the system? You may solve one single problem, but unless you fix the system, other companies which don't want to complain will face the same problem. So understanding the nature of the problem, the roots of the problems, uh, allows you to redesign, improve the system. On the other side, there were some general directors in the public administration which were untouchable, which were like landlords. It was very difficult for the entrepreneur to meet him. What I do is that I regularly organize round tables and putting both sides on the table. The discussion always starts very, very angry, you know. <laughs> uh, while while when they communicate, they try to understand, they start to understand each other better. They see the things not from their own perspective. So they communicate, you know, they have it out. Even the problem if it's not solved, the businesses at least say that, well, someone is listening. The Big, yeah. biggest problem was that, well, we speak, but no one hears. And several times, it's, it's, a, it's a quite uh, interesting process. Although they speak in Albanian, it seems that they speak in different languages. What someone says is not what someone else heard. And this is the differences in culture and mentalities. So bringing the, and closing the gap between the public institutions and the uh, entrepreneurs uh, start to build little by little trust. Uh, I don't know, but you let me know because we have a rumor when we start to speak, we never as politicians <laughs> as. I don't know how much time. I know that uh, I, you know, I, I, I do. That, so. Okay, yes, I, but uh, no, the, 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 the process is such as uh, is triggering is uh, is putting pressure on the public administration, uh, is uh, is uh, building a dialogue, is bringing a transparency. I'm not saying that things are are all sort out and quite suddenly the institution started to perform, people changed them, but at least we started some processes that we all get better from. And uh, and uh, this uh, my my when I, I remember when I became minister two years ago I set some priorities then I wiped them out and I said no just communication 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 not just not be, uh, between the uh, entrepreneurs and public administrations but also within different institutions. Uh, in the government. Yes. You know, to handle a complaint, you need the involvement of different institutions. 
And unless they communicate properly with each other and uh, come on board together, the problem is like a it's like with the chains. You know, it uh, it it's it's going to be cut in the weakest point. So seven one may function if not is functioning, then the problem is not going to be solved. And uh, and then I'll 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 say something about the online services which derive from the pressure we had and from understanding that what, what was one of the biggest problems that the entrepreneurs were facing. Yeah. Minister thank Chelsea, you. Thank, thank you very much for your introduction. I think you have a really cool position as Minister for the Protection of Entrepreneurship. And I love the fact that it is all uh, rooted in the Albanian culture and the, the reforms that have gone um, throughout that country, You know, whether it was energy, education, uh, territory, and of course, justice. So thank you for that introduction. Very much appreciated. Uh, Mr. Savia, if you please introduce yourself. Yes, yeah, sure. Well, my name is Victor Savia. Uh, I'm myself an entrepreneur. Um, I am CEO and founder of Brokerware. Uh, we do software for capital markets. In We are based in South America and Uruguay. Um, Your, your cash flow is flat. Uh, your idea might be a very good idea, but get it, that idea into the market um, is quite difficult. And, and, and you are always fresher at the beginning. But on the other side, um, you, should, you shouldn't cradle too much that because uh, once you're in, in the game, you got to build your, your own strength. You, you got to build muscle. So if you protect them too much, you, you, I think that you, you might have this kind of, of, of you know, like two sides of the, of, of the coin. Like you, you need to protect your, your entrepreneurs, but you shouldn't protect them too much in order for them to, to build muscle and, and to, to, be, to grow as, as, as a company as they should, you know, like something like that. Um, thinking about the, the, the title of this, um, of this conference, um, I was thinking last week, and, and, and there was a quote that that came into my mind that said, um, "No matter what you do, you wake up one day and you're a, a company that makes software, or, or you're an IT company." Um, and and that's something I I quite really agree with because uh, you know, like um, I'm sure that 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 software is, is sitting in the wall, like. Every, everything has software in it, uh, and we're moving into uh, further and further away into um, a planet that has uh, more technology in every uh, aspect of the economy you see in every uh, area of, of the market. But I think it's quite funny that many, many times the people that said that are, are really the incumbents in the market. So um, what, I, what I think that, that is pretty interesting to analyze is that they say that, and it's, it, it might be quite sure that they, they are adding technology to, to their verticals, but they're, they're adding new features to the, to the, well, no matter what you do, you do one thing, that that's the thing you do in your market. And then you add new features, you improve the, your product, uh, and that's the, the kind of thing that we call innovation. And mostly big companies are very good at doing that because they can go to the clients and ask them, oh, okay, what, what can we do better in, in, in our product, in, in your service? I say, well, you, you might be doing this, that, that. They take that to the R&D department. They develop the new product. They send it to the market. And it goes on a cycle of innovation. That is okay unless... For a vertical, you touch the one thing that is the, the revenue model. You know, like yeah, when 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 you touch that thing, you're disrupting the the the, the market, and and that is something that incumbents never want to do. You know, like they, they might see that um, 
there must there, there might be a, a tech company that would take over everything that we are doing right now but they fear more changing that than 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 the, the one thing that you do good than than uh, they they fear the, the change so um let, let me give you an example there, there were there was a time in history um where roads were two lanes uh, we have a lane for the cars and a lane for the horses and in a period of time of four years we went from cars and horses to only cars and and, and the thing that happened is the the new thing obsolete the other thing that already existed in, in the market and and that's the kind of the disruption that that happens in the market and makes that um a new company from 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 nothing gets to 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 the whole to get the whole market that that's a uh, something um, the the term disruptive uh, innovation was was coined by uh Clayton Christensen who passed away last year uh he was a Harvard business business school professor and he studied the way that the Japanese car entered the, the U.S. market, and it's pretty interesting the the the, the way uh, he tried to to uh, help the the U.S. car companies, but he couldn't do it. And in the way he learned a lot about the way uh, new products enter in the market and hit in the one thing that is important to the market and 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 changes changes everything. So, um, well, I, at least I, I, I can tell why they, they don't want to change the, that thing. And that is because you changing that thing, you, you have many ways of getting it wrong and so few ways of getting it right. So why changing right. that, that may take several years of, of losing market share, losing some of your clients in order to do something that might in the future be uh, the one thing that 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 makes the difference so that that's why uh disruption most of the times comes only from from startups because they are the ones who want to take the risk they are the ones yes. who, who who really can do it um that's the kind of thing you you should be protecting minister <laughs> because <laughs> that, that's the 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 seeds for a new wall will come from there. You know, like. That's right. That's right. Yes. It, it, thank you, Victor. It's you made some great points. You know, the fact that uh, software is essentially running our world and, and is prevalent in everything. Uh, I I remember talking with you know a couple of uh, of, of my customers. You know, Federal Express, um, and they said, no, we're not a transportation and logistics company. We're a technology company. And yeah, I really sure. have to think about that. It's like, right, okay, so you know, your business is moving packages around, but you're really a technology company. Um, so thank you both for that uh, that great introduction of yourselves and your role. Uh, my name is Ed Adams. Uh, I'm your panelist and your host today. Um, now, this talk is all about launching a digital business or solution from a bold idea. So let me uh, ask you, uh, Minister Shalsi, what bold idea did you recently take on, uh, and how is technology driving that innovation for you? As I said, uh, top priority is the, my top priority was communicating with the entrepreneurs. You see news, you see different portals, you see, and you create a perception about the problems of the entrepreneurs, or generally the problems that the society uh, is facing. Many times, the one who gets the most attention in the news are not really the the real problem of the, of the people or the entrepreneurs and i did two things i did a detailed poll about the what were the most uh, problematic uh, <clears throat> or what did the entrepreneurs think about the problems. Uh, level of the taxes was the first question. Then there were several others. While I was visiting different entrepreneurs, I found out that they were not complaining about the 
level of the taxes, they were complaining about the way they were served. Uh, they wanted equal treatment. They wanted a proper services in the front offices of the government. In the countries like Albania, where, you know, were 50 years the dictatorship, the 30 last years were perceived as from one extreme, not allowed to speak, not allowed to do things you should do, to the concept of the freedom as uh, something that you can do anything. While we were um, having meetings with the associations of the entrepreneurs, the problems was the level of the services, the way they were served, the, word, the way they were uh, accepted in the front offices. Cost, they had people to submit documents, uh, time consuming, not very well served. October 2019, I presented the problem to the Prime Minister of Albania. A week later, he called an uh, urgent meeting and he said, it's 26, 27 October. 1st of January, I want all the application of the services online. Everybody was shocked. You know, applications online. Of course, we had uh, done investments and we had established a, a, a proper agency. But, you know, to say that in two months' time, you have to provide services, at least for the applications online, not till backends, was something everybody was sketching about. Uh, the businesses were happy to hear, but they all thought it, it is impossible, as most of the public officials thought. So there were two months a nightmare. People were not sleeping, a lot of pressure on them to perform, 1st of January, we started with the applications online. Not for all the services, but for part of it. We said uh, these kind of services will apply only online. No offices are allowed anymore. For a transition period, we let the, the offices but people had not to supply uh, letters, to submit letters, requests, but to fulfill the forms in the computers provided by the <clears throat> state or public administration. And we scheduled every three months several groups of, uh, of uh, services. It was a mishmash, as a matter of fact, in January. Confusion between offices, tension, fights between uh, employees. On February, things started to be smooth a bit. March, we had the uh, pandemic. People were obliged now even to, to get out from the, the houses or to get permissions to do uh, their businesses. We had the platform, which was improved, and by April, things were, were functioning. I mentioned that we're talking about the online application, not the processes till the permission of authoriz or authorization. In the end of uh, the year, 
the last December, we had more than 92, 93 uh, services offered online in terms of the applications. But it was not the application only. When we started to see this application which is online, which are the steps? We started to re-engineering the process, which was the most important thing. And re-engineering the processes, we <laughs> were surprised many times to see, you know, a letter going from A to B to C institutions to go back to the B as very chaotic. And this, every single step, were a reason to postpone, to corrupt, to mistake, to, to, to. So the offering online started to help us better understand the roadmap that the service can go through. That's, that's and how the institutions, how the institutions are, are interlinked. Right, right. So that, that uh, digital transformation provided you with a tremendous amount of visibility and that further allowed you to, to fix and optimize the processes that were otherwise very inefficient. Absolutely. And uh, when we see the users now, how they were, how they increasing, but uh, when we see now that how some general directors are, despite the fact that they've been running the institutions for months or years, they never thought about re-engineering of the processes or resetting or remodeling the, the thinking. Even for us, even for me, you know, Mm -hmm. When we were coming across several problems, we were saying, wow, why didn't we think about it before? <laughs> How the hell did we, didn't we found out? Well, is this paradoxical? Is this, is... so. <clears throat> yes, people get um, very con content. And, uh, and that, yeah. that was a forcing function, that digital transformation. Absolutely. And, and what, what's amazing to me, though, is between... October, when your, uh, the prime minister made that uh, that oh. directive, next month you had a major earthquake. Two months later, you had a pandemic mm -hmm. breakout. I mean, it was you had a lot of significant challenges in there. You know, when we look back, but now our life is at such a speed that we will realize later on what we've been going through. You know, it's 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 somewhere in our mind. But uh, you no, know, the thing is that. Uh, you know, it brought some changes on the systems. It brought some changes on the mentality. It uh, it cultivated a new way of thinking. Uh, it uh, it showed who is performing better, who is not performing better. So there was a turmoil for two months, which uh, helped us ameliorate ourselves and our 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 system. Of course, uh, let's not be, uh, you know, I'm not saying that everything is going uh, smoothly or the problems are quite suddenly uh, or no longer exist. No, we have more any problems that the entrepreneurs are facing still uh, many, many problems. But at least we are uh, on the right track. We have entered a road which uh, will have no turning back. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. That, that's a, a really a fantastic uh, tale of progress, Minister Chelsea. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Savio, let me ask a question to you. Uh, so you, you mentioned a few minutes ago how digital innovation can completely redefine uh, and disrupt an industry, um, but it can also redefine your competitive context um, and in some industries, it just changes forever, such as the music industry, which is now essentially all digital. How do you stay informed about potential disruptors to your business, and how do you keep ahead of them in this digital arms race? Uh, if I'm talking about myself and 
my particular industry and what am I doing? Uh, I think that the only way you can do it is trying to disrupt it yourself. Uh, like trying to be the one that disrupting the thing. Um, um, let me tell you this. Um, well, our aim be that as, nimble, as that nimble small company that is willing to take that that risk and that chance. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, we are, we as a company as as broker, we our main aim was at the beginning trying to 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 fill the gap between the software that that you you can have if you are a broker dealer in the US and the software you you, you might have here. There was quite big gap between that, and we, we tried to fill that and make it the same way. So in, in that endeavor, we, we get strong at doing that. And we start moving to competing with, with those companies giving services in, in central countries like US or Europe. Uh, but I'm, I'm always thinking, when, when, I, when I think about that, it's just thinking about innovation. Um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, think, I'm always thinking about disruption and disruption in my market or in the market which, which I'm giving service to. Because if I don't have clients tomorrow, <laughs> there, there's, there's, no, there's no way for me to exist. So um, I'm always thinking about the ways we, we can rebuild ourselves into giving new kinds of services or, um, and that is something that, I, that I'm thinking of, it's disrupting them, you know, like maybe it, it, um, if, if, if I can give you the, the service for, for them to, to, to compete with a disruptor, uh, I might be the disruptor for themselves, you know, like may, maybe something like that. It, that's something that, that's always on my mind, saying the, 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 the things my clients do and the things I do uh, and the way to, they, they, they might be disrupted or me myself be disrupted. Um, as an entrepreneur, you, you always think, you know, like, uh, I can always do some other thing. I can always move to some other market. <laughs> and that's the way entrepreneurs think, you know, like, um, mm, you do give me that ball and, and, and I will be able to handle it. But, right. uh, the, the, the real thing is that, um, you don't really know. <laughs> when that's what Some, I mean, sometimes you, you just have to yeah. try, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you have to be alert, and you you have to 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 see what's what's happening in the world, and and be able to to be the one that is disrupting, and not the one that is being disrupted by some somebody somebody else. Um, and let let me add, let me just add one more thing because. I, uh, it's pretty funny because um, I run a software company that makes software for capital markets, but my my, my degree was in natural sciences. So um, many times I, I like to see the um, things that happen in nature that, that are somehow uh, similar to day 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 to day life. So mm -hmm. and, and thinking about. Uh, innovation and disruption, it came across to me that, that idea that um, how the, the some virus evolved, like the flu virus. We talked a lot about viruses last year, so um, I think it, it might be relevant, but um, um, for example, the, the flu virus has two ways of evolving. One is the, 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 the natural way that, that always is evolving and, and it's called uh, antigenic drift or, or genetic drift. And, and, the, and the thing is that the virus starts to um, get small changes in, in, in the nuclear sequence, in the RNA sequence. So uh, for the next year, you will get a strain that is slightly different than, than the ones you had last year. So uh, that's why you need to get vaccinated every year because there, there's this kind of competition between how the, vir the virus adapts to to infect exactly. you and how, how you, you, you develop new defenses for that. Um, but then there, there's another way of, of evolving for uh, at least um, the flu virus, and that is genetic drift, uh, the genetic shift. 
And when you have genetic shift is that uh, a strain of virus combinates with another strain of virus that, that contaminates a, a, another um, host like a pig or a bird or something like that. So re reco he recombinates and then you have some strain that is completely different to, to the strains that, that circulated last year. So, and that's why you get um, the outbreaks like the H1N1 from 2009 right. and you have pandemics and, and all that. So, um, I came in to think that, that the genetic drift is like innovation and the genetic shift is like uh, disruption. So be, because of the, the effects they have in the, in the in their own market, I yes. can't say. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, Minister, Minister Chelsea, I understand you do have to uh, leave us very shortly. If you please, one parting thought or piece of advice for our audience from you. A year after now the pandemic, you know, the freaking out from the beginning, Till now, we all have gone through a curve. But now, I think we more mature to understand that uh, we must come stronger uh, and we must come with uh, new ideas. And probably what happened, uh, discovered uh, our weakest point, which should lead us to build the future again and to, to, to proceed with uh, lesson learned and uh, with new ideas, which if pandemic was not happening, probably we could have uh, waited for, 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 for years. That's right. Now we know that the vaccines are despite all of difficulties uh, delivered and but let's focus now on uh, on the things we can do with uh, with uh, with uh, passion with courage okay thank you very much minister best thank wishes you. in the upcoming election thank you for thank the you. invitation and uh, hope to see you again wish you yes. all uh, Best. Great pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Mr. Sabia. Uh, same type of question to you. Uh, if you you've got one piece of advice you would like to leave our audience with, or one uh, one parting thought, what would that be? Uh, I think that in, in every market, whatever you're doing, you can be a follower or a leader. Try to be the leader. Mm -hmm. Try to be the one that's making the thing that is different, that make changes. Uh, because if not, you, you, you will always, I, I know that that is different, that, that is, that is difficult. You will always have, have fog in, in what is the direction of what, what you should do or what you shouldn't do. But, uh, I think that, that taking baby steps. Uh, proving that into the market and and take it taking back the, the feedback, uh, you can you can do pretty well on that. Uh, maybe it's not the bold idea, but um, anyway, you sh you should try to be a leader, and not a follower. That, that's pretty much what what I would advise. Absolutely. Now, with your particular business or your industry, have you seen a, a pivot or shift? Uh, mainly due to the COVID-19 pandemic and, um, you know, everyone working remotely. Uh, have you seen a pivot or shift that is going to remain permanent? Something that essentially has, has changed your industry that uh, is not going to go back? Um, well, that, that's, that's difficult to say. We, I think that, that we, we, we have changes. Um, I think that many of them will stay forever. Uh, I don't know how, at, at what level they, they, they will come back or, or they, will, they will stay. I hope they, they, many of them will stay because uh, I think they're, they're reducing mobility, for example, taking uh, congresses online or um, using technology to communicate faster and 
you know, like with, with, with communication system like Zoom, you can have, uh, many, many, many calls in a day, uh, without moving from your office. So, uh, right. I mean, and that think, is, of, think about this. I mean, I'm in the States, you're in Uruguay, the minister Shalsi was in Albania. All feels like we're yeah, sitting that, in the same room, right? Yeah, that, and that was something that we already had, but we, we didn't use it in a, exactly. in a strong way, like something like that. But, um, yeah, I think that there are some things that, that will stay. I think in education, there, there will be a lot of changes because, uh, now, um, everybody tried it. They liked it. They, they, they feel they can do it. So the, there is a lot of, things that, that will move forward this way. I agree. I agree. Well, with that, we will close our session. Uh, I wish you the best of luck with your continued success at BrokerWare, and I hope all of your bold ideas uh, are met with success, <laughs> and, and you are the disruptor that you talked about. So, okay. Victor Sabia, thank you, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Okay. Good Bye. Bye, everybody.